Welcome back to another Notebook Check Tech review. And in this video, we've got the Lenovo IdeaPad 305, which is an entry level 15.6 uh, inch laptop, um, 500 gig storage, fairly basic specs running on an AMD A6 processor. This one, a couple of things we want you to watch out for. The details are in the review video. But before you watch that, coming up, on the video soon, and it's a great reason to subscribe, is the UX305, an Ultrabook, on the Broadwell platform. And then we have another Lenovo entry level 15.6 inch, it's the Lenovo 100, and that's on the Braswell platform. Gotta get those things right, Atom Braswell. We've also got the HP Pro Tablet 608G1, which is a high res, business focused, um, eight inch Windows tablet. So subscribe and you'll get notifications for those. But, <coughs> excuse me, in this video, the Lenovo Pavilion, no, sorry, the Lenovo IdeaPad 305. So this is the Lenovo IdeaPad 305, which is a really entry level uh, office or home use 15.6 inch, uh, really budget level uh, laptop. Um, it's running the AMD A6 uh, processor inside, that's the Beamer architecture, uh, running at 1.8 uh, gigahertz, and it's got the Radeon R4 GPU inside. So in terms of CPU, it really sits with the uh, Intel Atom, uh, Broadwell, sorry, the Braswell uh, chipsets, uh, although the GPU is a little bit more powerful than that. We've got a big keyboard here with separate uh, um, Merrick pad uh, and a fairly big uh, touchpad there, which seems fairly reasonable in terms of click and uh, performance there. So you've got four gigs of RAM inside here and we've got a 500 gig SATA spinning hard drive. There is a spare uh, DDR3 channel, uh, oh, sorry, DIMM slot inside so you can add another bank of RAM in there and this SATA port is fairly accessible. If you look on the underside you'll see there's a removal panel that allows you to access memory, storage and the uh, Wi-Fi card as well. Taking a quick look at the ports then, we've got a, a power, this is a classic Lenovo power port here, fan output, VGA, uh, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, so you've got dual uh, video outputs and two USB 3 ports on that side. On the front, you've got a full-size SD card reader slot there. And then if we move over to the right-hand side, you'll see there's a, an additional USB port, a headphone port, and we've got the DVD multi-writer there. We measured a brightness in the middle of 258 nits, which um, when you consider that something like an iPhone uh, 6 is uh, 450 to 500 nits, it's uh, certainly not um, outdoor capable. Although certainly in an office scenario, um, the colors don't seem to be too bad. And the, um, you know, the, as the uh, uh, contrast ratio 573 to one is not, uh, not too bad either for a, for a budget office laptop. A couple more of the specs for you. Haven't got AC Wi-Fi on here, so it's a standard ABGN, uh, but you do get gigabit ethernet port there. Um, in terms of a noise, it is, there is a fan inside, but it's fairly quiet. And uh, um, that's one of the, uh, the good points about this is that it's a, a fairly quiet uh, laptop. So it could be good for home usage, home office usage as well. So it's not really the most mobile of, of laptops. These 15 inch uh, low cost devices are usually well over two kilograms. This is a 2.3, which isn't too bad considering uh, what you've got here, but there's a very, very small 32 watt hour battery inside at the back there. It is removable, but um, have a look at our performance test a little bit later in this video and you'll see that it is not too, not too good in terms of battery performance there. So you'll find the full review at notebookcheck.net.com uh, for the German version. We've got a ton of uh, test results there, CPU, GPU, uh, heat, um, a lot of performance tests on the screen, and some gaming tests. Let's just go through a few of those for you now. So in terms of CPU on the Cinebench R15 Multi score, it's uh, scoring just below the Acer Aspire E15, which runs the Baychel N3540 CPU, and that's really what this Beamer 
A6 Beamer is up against. Um, now the CPU scores are entry level in terms of performance. We'll get you through uh, a day of office work without any problem. Let's just take a, take a look at the uh, GPU scores uh, on this because the, uh, the AMD uh, pr uh, processors are generally a little, bit, a little bit more powerful in terms of GPU. And if we take a look at the 3D Mark 11 scores, well, the IdeaPad 305 is 192% faster than that Acer Aspire E15. So that Bay Trail N3540 with its uh, HD built-in graphics is really um, nowhere near as powerful as the 305. If we take a look at some gaming uh, re uh, results. Now, this is no gaming machine, but entry-level gaming and uh, low... Uh, low setting gaming on some recent games is quite reasonable. A Grid Autosport 2014 game came in at, came in at 56.9 frames per second on low settings. Now medium settings really won't get much uh, out of any recent games but some old games. World of Warcraft should work fine on medium settings and certainly uh, Minecraft as well. No problems there with this, uh, with this platform. Now let's get on to the Lenovo IdeaPad 305 battery life and here we have a little problem. The 32 watt hour battery pack included in here is obviously there to keep the, the price down but it's, uh, it's just not enough to give um, what you might expect from a 2015 laptop. One of the problems is it's a big 15 inch screen obviously that requires a lot of backlighting, a lot of spinning hard drive, we've got a fan inside and um, there's a fair bit of GPU power in there which is also taking battery life. So the 32 watt hour battery is giving us three hours 58 minutes of surfing over Wi-Fi. Surfing over Wi-Fi is one of the tests we um, we would use to indicate an average usability in a home scenario and um, if you're gaming that's going to come right down. We saw a maximum of 22 uh, 24 watts at the PSU um, you could be getting down under two hours of battery life if you're gaming on this. Um, that's the problem. Now, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. This is going to have to be uh, a home device. If you think in a year's time you're happy with a, a device that only returns maybe three hours after the battery is degraded, maybe oh, after two years, maybe uh, three hours of battery life, then, then maybe that's acceptable. But um, 3058 is certainly not class leading. And the Acer Aspire E15 ES1512, which is using the, the Bow Trail N3540, giving you the same sort of CPU power, not quite that GPU, GPU power though, um, will give you a lot more battery life. 50% more, in fact. So a summary then, the IdeaPad 305 is a simple office notebook, uh, which is all around, generally all around pretty good. Um, there's nothing, no major problems with the keyboard and, and the screen, although this is a, a low quality area, um, but it matches the sort of price. Got to give them points for that little access port at the back, so there's some upgrade possibilities. The, the, the uh, speakers are quite nice and the GPU power for the price isn't too bad. So in terms of value, it's depending on what you want. I think actually for a home office um, casual gaming, 
uh, laptop this might satisfy you know uh, certainly the minecraft players uh, at a pinch it's not a high performance gaming device um, so bear that in mind certainly for internet surfing at home it's good but if you're wanting to do that maybe in front of the tv a smaller device might be more stable for you certainly good point ports on this upgrade capability is fairly good it's just really that um that uh, battery life is the major problem maybe a little bit of that give that we saw on the keyboard uh, could also annoy you as well so that was the Lenovo IdeaPad U, no, just the IdeaPad 305. We gave it a score of uh, 70% and you need to watch out for the battery life, for that flex in the keyboard. Uh, but in general, it's a fairly quiet uh, um, laptop that's got a little bit more graphics power than the Intel Atom platforms. Score of 70% isn't in the very good category, but it really does depend on your pricing. Here, if you can get this for a good price, um, probably generally all-round good home office uh, laptop, plenty of storage on there as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the videos. As I mentioned at the top of the video, we've got a few devices coming out. The tablet uh, from HP, the Pro 608G1. We've got the Lenovo IdeaPad 100, that's on Atom. And this one I'm quite looking forward to myself actually, the UX305 on Broadwell with 256 gig SSD, eight gigabytes of RAM. That's a nice ultrabook that was popular first time around when it was with Haswell. With Broadwell, it should be a lot better. Don't forget to subscribe to get notifications of those. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on another Notebook Check Tech Review.